my name is Shelley Silver. I'm the director of The Lamps, which is a uh, brief scene from the amazing life of the Baroness Elsa von Freitag Loringhoven. Welcome to the festival. That's a Berlin. Oh, you're, you. you're an old Berliner, actually. I am. You, you, you've been here quite a lot. And yeah. The first time in the early 90s. Yes, I so came you, here first in 91. Okay, so you really experienced this period after reunification and like this special kind of energy, which is fading now. A lot of people are very afraid that Berlin is losing its, you know, status of this free city, you know, with this free spirit. And you were probably lucky to have experienced that in the early 90s. Yeah, at the moment it was really tumultuous and I made a film about it, Former East, Former West, which is re was really about how do you define German mm -hmm. after the reunification? Mm -hmm. And I went to almost every neighborhood in Berlin to do interviews, and it was an incredible time. And did you interview Berliners, or like was it was it people that had moved there? Or just anybody all sorts of who would probably, talk yeah, to that's us. What made up the anybody city, yeah. who would talk to us. Yeah. Okay. Well, this time you came with a different film. Very different film. Shorter. Mm -hmm. um, and it is it is show it is introducing us to a very special personality living in a time where these times actually did not allow for such a such an open and free spirit. In right, our, right. Um, who is this person? So the Baroness Elsa von Freitag Loringhoven is uh, was this amazing poet, uh, sculptor, crossdresser. Uh, public provocateur and personality that was so large and so breaking the boundaries mm -hmm. that, uh, in fact, she suffered quite a bit for it. Mm -hmm. what, what fascinates you with her? What is, what is, what is attracting you to, to this personality, or persona, or personas she was like? Well, what attracts me is that um, she was just so amazing and so um, strong and so absolutely fearless, mm -hmm. uh, and then finally imploded from it. But also, um, there's not that much known about her. I mean, there's some artwork left, there's poetry, there's an um, unpublished memoir, mm -hmm. but very little is known so that in fact, uh, she's like a perfect person to project one's own fantasies mm -hmm. onto. Mm -hmm. And she's also a very contemporary figure mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. we're, we're only now catching up with her. Mm -hmm. So you focus on a specific, uh, special journey she made down to the south of Italy, where mm -hmm. she comes across interesting sex objects from Pompeii. Actually. Exactly, exactly. And what, how, what is the relationship between the, the past and the present in, in your film? And what, what is interesting about those objects and this special place she, she went to? Well, you could see it in that different moments of history mm -hmm. allow for a more broad um, definition of gender and sexuality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so definitely the objects in Il Gabinetto Segreto, mm -hmm. the secret cabinet, mm -hmm. uh, contain a lot of those objects. Mm -hmm. And then uh, when she went, which was the late um, 19, 19, 1800s, 19th century, uh, women were not allowed in, but she broke in and she um, fondled all of these amazing objects. And then now, um, as her um, life is being rediscovered, I went back to this moment of time. Mm -hmm. And in fact, uh, there's a certain sculpture in it that figures quite centrally that I won't talk about, but also references uh, a certain blurring of boundaries. Mm -hmm. Do you think she would have had a much easier life if she had lived today or later? You know. I, speaking for myself, because again, she's a figure to project onto, mm -hmm. I think that she definitely would have if I look at my mother mm -hmm. and my time, and then I project back a few centuries, like, you know, a century earlier. Where you know, you absolutely. Where's where your mother from? Where did you uh, grow? I grew if up I in Brooklyn. Okay. Okay. And my mother grew up in Brooklyn, and my grandparents were immigrants from okay. Eastern Europe. Okay. And yeah, I, I would like you to elaborate more on your personal relationship to this figure. What, what is it? What, what, what are the personal connections or like the points that maybe you have in common or that you, that you project in, in the end? Well, like every... I'll put it this way, like every person who at the moment identifies themselves as a woman, uh, mm -hmm. you're constantly hitting up against these boundaries or mm -hmm. hitting up against these places where you're um, located. And I would say that that's more expansive, that's mm -hmm. anybody, mm -hmm. but especially under patriarchy, certain mm -hmm. people feel it more. Mm -hmm. So 
as much as she probably had a much harder time, I feel constantly pushing up against these definitions and even yeah, what it is to be a person right you, now. Can, yeah, can you talk about right now? Because it's such a, you know, there, there are moments where you can say, you know, there's certain parts of like patriarchy are in the process of being defeated, you know, that there has been some liberation. But then also talking about the U.S. at this very moment, it is so like looking at it from Europe, it is so scary, you know, almost to see people like Trump or whatever who like embody this like horrible like patriarchal figure, you know, and he becomes so popular. So and there seems to be this backlash maybe coming. I don't know if it's if it's really there yet or not. But yeah, how how do you experience life in the U.S. at the moment too? Okay. Um, you use the word backlash. backlash yes. So you yes. use the word backlash, exactly. and I think that it's a crucial world word because as much as we're moving forward mm -hmm. in terms of rights, mm -hmm. there's also a huge backlash against it. Uh, if you look at even in the United States, but certainly around the world, around the yes. violence towards women yes. is enormous. Violence towards people who look different for whatever reason yeah. is enormous, and this happens also in New York. So. Uh, I do think it's an exciting moment mm -hmm. in certain ways and also for certain classes of people, certain people living in certain places, mm -hmm. uh, but also there's a huge backlash against mm -hmm. anybody who looks or identifies as different, mm -hmm. female, queer, mm -hmm. you name it. Mm -hmm. And um, I worry about that also because I worry about uh, the political situation and how to push through all of all people's rights. Mm -hmm. And certainly the Baroness uh, was pushing physically, verbally, and mm -hmm. otherwise mm -hmm. for um, the right to speak in different ways and the right to live in different mm -hmm. ways and look different. Mm -hmm. what, what do you think is she teaching us uh, or can she teach us for these, this very moment we live in right now? Like what specific behavior or actions or just mindset, or, you know, what, what is it that she could help us with. Well, it's like the, the guiding, I don't know, like spirit, you know, like in that. Well, where she helps us is this example of okay. someone who pushed, okay. this example of someone who created. I mean, of course, until very recently, nobody knew that she was actually the creator of what became mm -hmm. Marcel Duchamp's fountain. Mm -hmm. Marcel Duchamp spoke about her, the, you know, the Baroness is mm -hmm. the future. And so I think that for me, I see her as a kind of role model, a mentor, a possibility, uh, a kind of um, excitement that I could look back to and then project myself forward into, although you know, I'm not at all dressed as she does or as fabulous as she is. Still, her spirit shows also that through time that somehow she survived enough that now we can re rediscover her. What is, what is like your role as an artist in these times too? How do you define your role? I mean, I would say that in, in the best sense, I try to be a mentor. I'm an artist. I'm also an educator. I teach at Columbia University. Mm -hmm. I'm the first chair of my program, the visual arts program, who's mm -hmm. a woman. So in many ways, like in the outside world, I try to uh, yeah. Like project too, like yeah. positive things. Exactly, exactly. Things. Be someone that I never had when I was growing up. Or, you know, I mean, my mother worked and my mother was a great mentor figure for me. Okay. But certainly at university, there were very few figures that I could look to. But then in terms of my own work, um, I would say that I don't like the work world as it is. And I don't um, decide I'm going to make a work to make the world better. Mm -hmm. um, I make a work that I'm excited about, passionate about, and because I find it difficult to live in the world right now, then it usually pushes into the realm of pushing against certain norms, whether they be genre norms, or um, gender norms, or narrative norms. But as a professor, how do you experience the, the work or the general behavior of young maybe like female identified is maybe the right word or like yeah. women or female bodied people um, in, in, in university contexts, in emerging artist contexts, like how do they have enough self-confidence? Are they, 
well equipped, you know, for the future? What is your experience? I mean, some are more than others. Mm. It's still a very patriarchal system, the academy. Mm. Uh, we're doing all we can to change that. Mm. Um, but what's worse is when they get out, the art world is very sexist, just like the film world is very sexist. So this is so that in a way you have to be that much more out there, that much stronger. And I mean, I have fought not to do things in a mainstream way, which of course disadvantages me also. But you know, nobody, I, I don't want anybody to tell me how to speak. So, um, but I think that on the other hand, that the, the new generation is making huge uh, leaps forward that I never did. For example, um, we were just looking at the applicants for next year and the amount of people that um, were not he or she, but were they, was enormous. And this was really the first year that we noted that. And so this makes me wildly optimistic. That's great. And I think the U.S. teaches us so much, too, that we, we can't deny this intersectional look at stuff that, you know, there's always this interference of race, class, and gender. And yeah. I feel still that in the U.S. there's, there's, there's amazing programs and people that push, push for it. So I'm optimistic, too. Yeah, yeah. I try to be. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. For coming and showing mm -hmm. your film.